Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again. And here we have a video with the magic two and a half inch brush. Yeah, this is the Bill Alexander two and a half inch brush that I just got. And uh, I'm really excited about using it. <laughs> and uh, it's fantastic actually. Um, I've been watching Bill Alexander recently a lot on YouTube. And uh, I really like the way he presents and I've just been enjoying it. And I, I really wanted the brush just because he uses it. The only reason I got it is because he uses it. And uh, and it's and it's fantastic. <laughs> so I'm using the paint that I had left over from the previous painting. If you've not seen it, um, I'll put it in the cards. Or um, It's called Winter Light. It's a good one. So I thought... In the morning, I got up really early, and I was like, oh, I'll do this painting. This is what I did. So I've covered the entire canvas with liquid white, the whole canvas, only a small amount. And here's the paints. I put a bit more crimson on, because I've run out a bit. So I'm picking up some Prussian blue and Elizabeth crimson and mixing it on my brush, giving it a good tap to get an even distribution of color. Just tapping, like I've said before, <laughs> imagine your brush, imagine your brush is tap dancing shoes and <laughs> you're a tap dancer. <laughs> I always think that for some reason when I'm tapping the paint on. <laughs> it's very strange. So I'm using crisscross strokes, but you know, use whatever, just, it's just really chucking paint on here. Crisscross strokes seems to blend it out quite well. And areas that I haven't put enough liquid white on, I can just move it easy. Because I'm a little bit lazy. I don't always check the corners. <laughs> but I make sure I don't put too much on. That, that's the big thing with liquid white. Um, don't put much on. You only want a little bit, a little bit, tiny bit. So we've got that background skies done straight away. You can get skies done so fast with this big brush. Isn't it brilliant? <laughs> I think it's fantastic, I do. I get excited by using these brushes and throwing in paint. I just really like throwing in oil paint. <laughs> See that area, it wasn't, didn't have much liquid white on, so I just scrubbed a bit across. No problem. So there we have uh, the sky and the uh, ground covered. I put that colour in there at the bottom just to uh, possible water or shadowy areas in the snow. I'm just using a paper towel just to knock out some of the paint. I had some liquid white blodged on the side of it. <laughs> I just took that off as well. So now using the brush straight, so straight up and down, I'm just pulling in some paint, giving it a tap. It doesn't really matter as so long as there's paint on there. Always tapping though, even distribution of color. So I'm just touching. There we go, thinking about tree shapes. Thinking there's a load of trees back there. And we're just tapping in. See where they are. And <laughs> I thought to myself, mm, this is uh, different using a, a big two and a half inch brush. But I actually enjoyed it, I enjoyed using it. I'm gonna do some more using this big brush. I've got quite a lot of ideas planned for the new year. Quite a lot. I'm uh, trying to do one a week. <laughs> and I've been designing paintings. And uh, I'm gonna introduce them, introduce my new paintings, and hopefully you enjoy them. And uh, maybe learn a little bit. Do make get you going, <laughs> get you started in painting at least, and then maybe you want to do some more complicated. It's good to start with something uh, fun and, and easy and then you can work up to something more challenging. It's 
when you start getting people saying, oh, can you paint my dog? Can you paint me? Then, <laughs> you know, the challenge begins and this, uh, this easier method will get you going. I say easier, you know. It's still a lot of the... It's still challenging. You've still got to think and plan and... It's still painting, isn't it? But this way, you know, you're just throwing in colour blocks of it with a big brush. <laughs> so you could do this. Start with a giant brush like this and then you can work down and go for some smaller brushes. Try them out. But if you can use a big brush like this, you can use a small brush. You can do those fine details. So I'm just tapping here, just tapping away. Thinking of shapes. And I thought, hmm, I can start using the, the sides of the brush. Just, like, just tap in at the, uh, the brush create a tree <laughs> using the sides. I've never actually done that one before, that um, method. I was, uh, I was quite happy with the, the way it works. Because sometimes you don't have time to pick up a fan brush. You just want to use the brush you've got in your hand. Or maybe you can't be bothered to clean a fan brush. <laughs> Which is more like it. So you think, oh well, I'll just use this big brush to create the tree anyway. So I'm getting a bit more confident with the brush now. Putting in another tree. <laughs> Going for another level. So I've got a lot of layers going on now. And, uh, there's another one. <laughs> you start having fun with this brush and you're like, oh, I'll have another tree there. Another one there. I wanted it a bit darker there. So what you don't want to do is let that brush slide though when you're uh, doing those trees. Don't let the brush slide, because then it will just, well, your effect will just melt away, basically. <laughs> Look at me, loading it up again. I want to darken this tree. Bring it forward. You can do that. You have the almighty power. <laughs> As Bill Alexander would say, almighty power when you've got these big brushes and when you've got this kind of power you might as well use it, enjoy yourself so like I said I didn't really have a plan for this painting it was just uh, I was up early and I just really wanted to paint and uh, so I did <laughs> I'm just uh, blobbing colour really now, thinking about the land that's here and I was thinking to myself, hmm, because I've been practicing houses recently, painting houses um, on the computer just so uh, I can keep myself fresh. <laughs> I can experiment a little bit on, on the computer more so, well not more so than painting but um, as an extra thing, extra way of practicing. But then you've got to uh, try and use what you've practiced uh, on the canvas. Well, that's what I do anyway. So I'm lobbing in uh, color, getting some color in there. It's just mixtures of the uh, Prussian blue and Elizabeth crimson. And then I've left that light area for uh, for water. I'll leave that as water. <laughs> so I really go for this. I'm really just trying to use the two inch brush, two and a half inch brush, sorry, as much as I can. And I went a bit darker there. <laughs> and I've done all that with that big brush. 
And that's laid in the painting. That's the painting idea all ready, really. And now it's just a matter of cleaning it up and adding highlights and details and and things. But that was uh, that's it so far. So now with the uh, liner brush, with the uh, the liner brush that's a bit dodgy. It's a bit broken. I'm uh, getting a bit of uh, linseed oil. A blob of linseed oil and the liner brush. And then uh, some colour. Here we go. There's linseed. That's linseed oil. You could use paint thinner or a little bit of liquid clear or it doesn't really matter. You just want to thin the colour so it it's a bit slick and I'm just putting in the indication of a few uh, tree branches and things in the background there I do enjoy putting all these little <laughs> little tree trunks and stuff in actually It's good fun. I do need to get myself a new liner brush though, because uh, that liner brush has had it. <laughs> it really has. I need a new one. So I'm just putting in all these little details and things, and I'm. Uh, <laughs> I find myself when I walk through the woods, I'm looking at all the different branches, and you get so many different shapes, all different. And uh, <laughs> you could paint any kind of shape on there and that would look like a real branch because I've been looking, I've seen all sorts. Same with clouds actually. I've seen clouds that are square. I've, I've, seen <laughs> I've seen clouds that look like dragons. Or maybe that's in my imagination running wild again. Soon be Game of Thrones. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I've seen all kinds of clouds. And if you painted those clouds in your painting, if I painted a square cloud, people would go, oh, clouds aren't like that. <laughs> but they are. They're so different. Same with trees. They have, there's so many different ones. So now I've got the, uh, oh, the tiny little brush. <laughs> the tiny one-inch brush. I'm just pulling in one direction pulling in one direction to get some paint on the bristles and then you turn it over so you get a rounded end on one side I'm thinking about the snow falling on some of these trees so we just pick out a few areas where where the snow is Like I said, you could use a tiny little brush if you want to do all this, or you can load a brush like this and get it done in a few minutes. <laughs> it is amazing though, and because people will look at it and they'll be like, wow, God, that must have taken ages to create all those leaves. And then you say, yes, it did, yeah, it did, yeah. <laughs> Keep it a secret. And you can add a few more pounds onto your painting. Yeah, it took a long time, that one. I was doing it for three days with a little brush. <laughs> uh, only joking. But I do know um, artists of the past have said things like that about their paintings, just to put the price up a little bit. <laughs> So you're working layers, remember, and don't fill it up with white. Don't fill it up. Make sure you leave some of this, uh, some of the areas you want to keep dark because otherwise your light won't show. You've got to have dark and light. And you can change things. You can uh, change the colors. You could have pinks and blues, purples, really light pinks. Do whatever you like. 
by using the edge of the brush just putting a bit of snow on this tree as well <laughs> this is a bit tricky actually I found I've got to remember that you don't pull the brush you just sort of touch just to get a bit of snow on there fun though and if yours isn't sticking if you find your paint isn't sticking on there um, you need a little bit of liquid white or something in there it means your paint isn't wet enough it's too dry to stick on the, the other paint because remember the golden rule a thin paint will stick to a thicker paint yeah it's quite a good effect though isn't it all these uh, trees and I put another one in there I thought oh, it would be nice to have another one there you see I get carried away and I start enjoying myself <laughs> Before you know it, there's no dark left, and then it's just a white splodge. <laughs> and there's only one way to fix those situations, and that's using a knife and swiping it all off. But luckily, I didn't go crazy with the white. So I'm just doing a little cabin, just scraping in, or scraping out, I should say, the area where I want this cabin to be. If you scrape it like that, it just makes it easier to see for when you put your dark in and it makes your dark stick better because it's not sticking on any paint and there's only a little bit of paint now. So grabbing some Van Dyke Brown, flatten the paint out, cut across, get a little roll. And this paint's quite thick, it's quite, it's quite a thick paint. I made it even thicker as well. <laughs> I've been getting into paint making recently. I'm starting to make my own paints. So that's just Van Dyke Brown. Um, blocking in the dark side of the, uh, the cabin. And then uh, where the bit of light is, we'll put a bit of white and burnt sienna cut across a little roll of paint and then very lightly just pull that down into the wood and this is the wood <laughs> I'm very delicate because I'm trying not to make a mistake <laughs> I've done so many cabins which worked really well and then I messed it up at the last minute. <laughs> and then the cabin gets bigger and I was trying not to do that on this one. But it makes me a little bit nervous. I'm like, oh no, I'm going to mess it up. So I would say that's quite light really. <laughs> it's funny watching me paint because <laughs> I know how uh, conscious I was of uh, possibly mucking that up <laughs> so the, the roof is going to have snow on it as well I'm going to and then uh, there we go just pulling out a bit of white just a little bit of blue and purple in there don't want it to be pure white because the, the snow is uh, wants to be the same colours that are around it. So just put in the roof there. Bloop. And then for this end. Bloop. No, we've got a cabin, a nice uh, cabin with some snow on the top. Now I wanted a window. I want the window to be. I wanted to. I was going to say I want the window to be on. <laughs> I want the uh, light to be on. So I got a little bit of uh, crimson in with the yellow ochre. Crimson just warms the uh, yellow ochre up a bit. 
And then I'll get a little bit of that white in it as well. And then cut across a little roll of paint. And then here we have one of the windows. It's a window there and then a window there. The lights on. Then what we need is a bit of a door in the front, so you just wipe the knife off and then get some dark. Oh, I thought I'd put some uh, scraping where the wood panels are. <laughs> just a bit of fun. Give the barn, barn, <laughs> give the cabin a bit of detail, really. Well, you can do all sorts. You can put little buildings on the side. You can paint all houses. You could do anything. And then put in a little door. Just straight Van Dyke brown. And then just cut off part where you don't need <laughs> just cleans it up a little bit and then uh, a little bit of light around the door because you can see the light coming through There's a little cabin. <laughs> Just adding a bit more yellow into the uh, into the light in the windows. It's a dangerous move. <laughs> you could mess it up quite easily doing that. You see, when I'm uh, just painting, I, f I feel like I can do anything and. Uh, I remember thinking that the window looked a bit too alike the outside and it's, it needed a darker line around it. So that works, that does uh, make the window a bit more windowy than it was. I've got the dark around it so it stands out a bit more. These little details though, it does help. And then after you've done a few of these cabins, You'll be putting them in your paintings and that'll be easy for you. That's what I tell myself each time I do one. <laughs> I tell you, the first time I painted a cabin with people watching, I was doing this demonstration in this art shop. And uh, I was doing it because I was trying to get people in my classes when I started classes. And... Uh, I was pretty nervous because it was the first public demo that I'd done and uh, crazily I thought I know I'll do a painting with a cabin in it <laughs> and I painted this cabin and uh, I couldn't get the paint to come off my knife when I was painting it and I was like what's going on why isn't this working the paint wasn't coming off and it was because I didn't press down hard enough because a lot of it is the feel of the paint a lot of these techniques it's about the feel of it and uh, until you've done a few paintings you don't know that feel so you just have to go through that and it's a learning process so I just pulled down some color there and then just pulled it across just to give the uh, that a watery effect it's quite an easy little technique and works really well, especially in this technique. Now I'm getting some uh, titanium white on the one inch brush. And I'm just using the side of it to create some snowy areas. Make this land snowy. <laughs> 
So you just put work in layers and you just push in, push in with the brush. You could do this with a fan brush, like I said. You can do a lot of these techniques with the fan brush, the two inch brush, the one inch brush. Even if you're feeling confident, the two and a half inch brush. <laughs> it's just um, what you like using. I like using the uh, the big brushes so I can paint a lot quicker then. <laughs> I wasn't sure about this as a uh, a video. I'm not sure why that keeps coming up. I wasn't sure about painting this as a video originally. Um, but then I thought, yeah, why not? Why not? It's an experiment and we all do experiments. So why not show it? So I'm just actually using a fan brush. <laughs> it's because I want to keep the snow on my uh, one inch brush. I thought there'd be a nice little path going towards that cabin there. And then to put that path into the ground, you just put a little bit of a uh, snowy, grassy stuff on top of it. And that makes the path sink. And a bit of uh, snow in f at the front of the cabin. And that makes it go in as well. It's a nice little place, that nice little cabin. I wouldn't mind living there, actually. <laughs> Be quite nice in that cabin. Have your easel set up, the fire going doing a bit of a painting and just adding a bit of uh, yellow ochre and white into the in there just to you know the, where the light is hitting the snow here and there a bit of light on the ground <laughs> that window was really making me struggle <laughs> I thought I'll fix it with a brush <laughs> A little chimney on because we want to, like I said, we want the fire on while we're painting, so we want to be nice and toasty. <laughs> so we have a uh, chimney in there. So we can have a mountain of canvases and we can just paint away the stress of everyday life <laughs> in a little cabin. That's one of uh, Clive's sayings, paint away the stress of everyday life. <laughs> it's true though, it does work. I mean, you've got a lot of worries and problems and bills and it's good to uh, do a painting because it's all about the painting. So I'm using the big old brush, the big old brush, it's new, the big old new brush. <laughs> And I'm thinking, oh, I could put a big tree here. I know, I'll just sl slop in this big brush. You ruined some of the trees that I liked behind it. But it doesn't matter. Good, good practice. But the problem is, I'm excited. I'm slopping paint on. I haven't really done this one before, and I didn't quite work it out. That does actually look all right. It doesn't soon <laughs> I don't know how I messed it up but it did get messed up you'll see so I reckon if I put a little bit of highlight on that tree I, I think it would look okay there if only I could repaint this <laughs> So I was like, oh, I'll put the highlights on after I've put, oh, I thought of this idea of having a few trees here. Just putting a few little branches. 
Just to create like a basic tree there. I thought that would uh, push the water back. And I quite like doing little trees like this. <laughs> so everything was going to plan at this point. <laughs> I thought, hmm, I can just throw in a couple of trees. I'm doing some water lines. I actually forgot about that. Trying to keep my uh, knife straight as I uh, put in a little bit of white. Where the land and water meet. Got these little ripples. Yeah, I would do that before putting the dark in there. <laughs> this front dark bit, it's better to put those lines in before, but yeah, never mind, I missed them out, so we've got to do them at some point, <laughs> so I thought I'll do them now, when I remember. Getting some Van Dyke brown on the knife, thinking, oh, alright, all I need to do now is put in a trunk, and then this tree is going to look fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> the idea was there. If only I could finish the painting off. <laughs> you see, you got to do paintings and make mistakes because then you remember what you did wrong. And then the next time you do your painting, you don't make that mistake this mistake here I am hitting white paint on hoping it's going to highlight this tree as well as it highlighted the ones behind it but it wasn't working and I couldn't understand why and there I am I'm using strokes if you look at that I'm pulling the paint pulling it and it's just mixing with the undercolor. You can't. <laughs> you can't do that. That doesn't work. You end up with a right mess. So I thought to myself, I've ended up with a right mess. <laughs> what am I going to do? Well, the only thing you can do when you make a mess, try and fix it with a big brush. <laughs> Make it dark again. And then maybe we can make it light again. Yeah, it's not a good way to fix it. There's a better way to fix a painting when you make a mess like that. I get when I pick up a fan brush, I get some white on it. <laughs> I've got a two inch brush in my hand there. <laughs> I've got a fan brush, a two inch brush. I think I've got a one inch brush in my hand as well. I'm thinking, oh, if I, if I darken it again and then if I use the big brush and put the highlights on it, it should work. It doesn't work, as this shows. Tap, 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 don't, don't pull the paint, don't pull the paint, no, no, <laughs> no, pull in it, look, pull in it, no, that's terrible. It, it's almost grating to watch, and it's pulled the brown into it, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's the best way to fix something that you've done wrong 
Get the knife out and scrape it all off. Just scrape it off. Sit back, have a look, think about it. Think, wow, well, you're not quite up to standard with the big brush. <laughs> so I throw in that dark again. I'm like, I'm going to get this right. This brush is magic. It's going to show me how to do it. And then I started to think, maybe the shape of the tree is wrong. And then I thought, you know what? I'm not going to do it like this. I'm going to change the tree. <laughs> I'm going to make it a different shape. Bigger. <laughs> now just throw in some more dark. <laughs> But it just shows you can change your mind. If something doesn't work like that, change your mind. And then think about the lights and then you've already loaded a brush. Just start putting in some snow where you think it needs it. Here and there. Bit of liquid white, a bit of titanium white, putting in the snow on certain branches and <laughs> it's good fun using the big brushes. Don't don't fill it up. Don't get rid of all your dark. You you start enjoying yourself, and I do it all the time. I start enjoying myself, whacking the white in, and and, it, and it's quite f fulfilling when you do a mess like I did, <laughs> and then you fix it, and then you start putting the light on. You start getting hyped up, and then you end up f doing you overdo, and you try not to overdo it. So I just put a little bit of white in there, just for the uh, these trees. I can have some little bits of... <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm going to change the fan brush. Lighten it a little bit. So I was sitting back, having a look for, hmm, it'd be nice to have a branch, see some branches in there, maybe a tree trunk or two. Just to give it something extra. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Start doing all these little details and, uh, like I said, this is me painting. This is this is how I am when I'm practicing painting. This is it. So I get right in there, do little fiddly things, do things that go wrong. And it's just the way it is. It's painting. Just pushing up there. Just pushing up. Get some snow out out of the uh, fan brush. Fan brush is fantastic. It works just as well as the two inch brush, the one inch brush, the two and a half inch brush. Sometimes you can do some amazing things with a fan brush that you can't do with the other brushes, but then sometimes it works better with the other brushes. You just experiment with them all. <laughs> Sitting back, having a look. Sitting forward. Scraping in some uh, sticks and twigs. I actually turned the camera off because I thought I'd finished and then I did some more. I thought, oh, I better film this. <laughs> so I turned it back on and just putting in these little extra details. I did some just little sticks and twigs and which I scraped in. And then I thought, oh, I'll just put in a few more twigs and things. And there, there's the painting that's on my wall <laughs> and uh, actually I've had a few comments about how much they like people like it so interesting because uh, when I finished this painting I was a little bit 
unhappy with myself. <laughs> but it has, it's come out okay, really. I quite like it anyway. You be the judge of it. Maybe you'll uh, have a go at something like that. Maybe you can make a nice little cabin with somebody at home. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you at another one. Cheers, bye.